Hey everybody, we're coming to you live from the expo floor and here's where all the fun happens. Come on, let's go take a quick look. I'm here at the Independent Game Festival with Dan Paladin from The Behemoth. How's it going, Dan? Hey. Good to see you. <laughs> so most of the people watching this show know you guys from that breakout hit, Alien Hominid. And I, like I told you, I have it on a couple of different platforms, Xbox Live, I've got it on, um, on PS2. But you guys are here competing in the Independent Game Festival with a new game. You want to tell us about it? Oh uh, yeah, our new game is called Castle Crashers. Um, it's a four player um, beat em up. So it's kind of like in the vein of Golden Axe or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, those old beat-em-ups, but we take it farther. I mean, you can do a lot more in the game. Each character has his own element, so um, say I'm poison, you know, I've got only poison attacks or I can choose to a nice guy, and it's all, they're all with that. And, and the controls are super, super intuitive. If I just hit jump, well, as soon as I'm holding my, my right trigger, everything else up here just becomes another spell. So if I hit jump and then hold down the trigger and hit jump, then it's this big blast of magic. So you can do all kinds of different things with your magic, different combos, Very and you have arrows and all kinds of stuff. So is it more like scrolling levels, or are they static levels? Oh, they're more scrolling. like super, like a, you know, uh, uh, Super Smash Brothers type of gameplay, or is it? Oh no, no, it's an adventure game. You you go throughout the whole level. Um, you encounter mini bosses. You encounter big groups of enemies. You kill them off. And they stole your princesses and all kinds of stuff, and you just go back to get it. Um, you know, it's just b really basic story, but yeah, you just. It's awesome. right so, yeah, so it's, so it's done like a side scrolling beat em up. Oh, yeah. Right? Streets of Rage just or anything. Better. Stuff, right? or just better. Just better. Well, and this is coming from the art guy, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so, you directed all the art on this game. I did. I did every, every visual that you see in Castle Crashers. Fantastic. And so now you guys are competing in this year's IGF. Good luck, you know, Thank in the awards. Is there anything else you kind of want to tell us that you guys are working on? Any other cool tidbit our audience may want to go check out? Uh, well, we just released Alien Hominid HD for Xbox Live Arcade. Right, which I got. Which is which I've gotten still as frustrating play, as ever. You can play one of the mini games online with three other people, and that's a lot of fun. I oh, so you guys fun. have some online mini games with people. Oh, yeah. Do. Excellent. Well, everyone just go and check out the Behemoth at their site. The links will be up on our page. Cool. Dan, good luck in the competition, and Thank thanks you. for taking the time. Right on. I'm speaking with Joseph Olin, the president of the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences. Joseph, thanks for taking some time to speak with me today. Chris, it's a pleasure to be here with you. So. The games industry is huge. It is really becoming a dominant force in media and entertainment worldwide, and the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences really caters to the games industry in what way? Well, we represent the creative aspects of game making. Uh, individual craft, craftsmen, women, writers, art directors, engineers, the development studios, and the publishing companies. And we look for a way to be able to recognize their great work through our Interactive Achievement Awards. We host the DICE Summit, which is the leadership of the game industry getting together to talk about what's next, what should we be thinking of for the future. So DICE, which is the conference that complements, I guess, the other side of the, uh, the award ceremony, um, it is different in some ways to many of the conferences out there because it acts more of like a think tank for what's coming up next? It's an opportunity to take the leadership of the game industry and to be able to have them take their heads away from their projects and be able to re-engage with each other and talk about the things that are interesting. We look to mix people who have interesting things to say that are just different and to look for people from the outside to introduce new ideas. Uh, our keynote this year was Jair Landau from Sony Pictures Digital Entertainment. So he's got online, online, offline, games licensing, and here he is talking to game makers about what they do is important and why animation and animators want to make games. Right, so yeah, again, as the industry continues to grow in so many other medias, you know, media uh, types are constantly looking at the game space. I mean, they want to understand how to get engaged, and they find out through, again, events like DICE. DICE is, DICE is a really strong event from a creative perspective, because it really is all about the creativity. It really isn't so much about technology. I think the technology of the how-to is you know, best served here at the Game Developers Conference, and it's why you know, Sun is here, and why their tools are here, and it's a great platform. 
but taking a step back, unless you have a good idea, there's no reason to create it. And I think that the root of DICE, design, innovate, communicate, entertain, is about where do I come up with an idea? What do audiences want? How am I going to engage someone today differently than five years ago? Five years ago, no YouTube, no MySpace, no 15 different email IM clients, and all these things compete with what we do in terms of game making. So today's uh, keynote from Phil Harrison at Sony and the Sony Home Project is a perfect reflection of what game makers think they have to do to be competitive and to be able to engage the new audiences. Uh, absolutely correct. And I applaud all of your work with the Academy and you know, to continue to, to elevate this industry to what we you know, collectively believe it should be. This is the best time to be a part of this industry. The games are so exciting. People are so energized with the different opportunities they have. And I think it's why there's 12,000, 13,000 people here. And walking around going, how do I build what I want to build and what's next? Exactly. Joseph, thank you Always so much for your time. Good to see you. I'm here with A. Thomas Goldberg, the Worldwide Director of Animation and Simulation Technologies for Electronic Arts. A.T., good to see you. Good to see you again, Chris. So, all right, animation and simulation technologies. This is something you and I have actually talked about quite a bit in the past. Mm -hmm. right? The march towards photorealism in games seems to break down once those beautiful characters start moving, right? So it's you want to talk to us about anima how animation techniques and simulation techniques are going to help these games not only look real, but start moving more realistically. So there's a few things that are going on. Um, one of the things that, that we're, we've decided pretty much is that you know, last you know, current generation consoles, a lot of focus on rendering, and as, you, as we've already talked about, you get to the point where everything looks beautiful, but then people start moving and they start looking like robots. So huge focus for us right now is just believable characters. How do we get characters to look, you know, move and act and interact in a much more believable and lifelike way? Um, and we're doing that just across the board. So an example of that is the game that we have behind here. So this is a game that, one of the first games since you've come over to E that's shipped using the kind of the tools and stuff yep. that you put in place for them, right? So yep. can you tell us a bit NBA about Street this? Street Home Court. Um, one of the things you'll notice, and this is, I think, a real difference between this game and a lot of other games you'll see, is that um, in a lot of older games and a lot of games that are out now, you can spot whenever a transition happens. See characters doing one animation cycle, and then so, boom, he does another, you see it. So they're running in one direction, stop, yep. and running in the other. You know, or even just like, you, even when they're doing blending, it's just like, you know, just see, guy goes, turns into something else. In here, you can watch this game for hours, and you just don't see it. The character is just completely smooth and seamless. One of the other things, though, that's been you know, great about this is that you know, it's realistic, it's realism, but we've also sort of pushed it. It's a street game, it's an arcade game, it's a lot more fun. We've got characters jumping 12 feet in the air and doing dunks, um, just really focused on making it, you know, and being possible to make it really as fun as, as we can. No, and the, the and game is absolutely beautiful, and you know, you're right that the animation is going to be the next big step. Do you also believe that physics, you know, seeing more and more uh, use of real world physics in games, that's the next big leap too? Physics is critical. I mean, it's, the characters aren't you know, running around in a vacuum. Um, I think that a lot of what we've seen, you know, a lot of the sort of ragdoll physics and so forth, um, I, don't, I don't personally don't think it's looked really good because I don't think people just turn off their brains and start flopping around. But the more we can use physics to inform what characters do, so that people, you know, so that the artists can actually use the information coming from the world to, to enable the characters to make better decisions that, you know, that enable them to really live in the world. Awesome. You know. Yeah, so better physics, better animation. AT, EA's lucky to have you. Thanks very much for showing us your oh, game and talking about it. Man. It's good to see you. And that wraps up our coverage of the 2007 Game Developers Conference. Thanks for joining us, and make sure you check back to java.com to see upcoming episodes with Scott McNeely, the founder of Sun Microsystems, Dr. Richard Marks from Sony, and live coverage from the Java One convention. And I want to give a special shout out to my biggest fans, AMT. And we'll see you next time on Level Up. And let's dance, and let's go, and it's time to end the show. And what you want, and I'm right here, and Stefan's over there, who's got that funk right on top. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm.